Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, I have the honor today to ask questions these beautiful ladies. And I also encourage you to ask your questions as well. Or we're going to have a very interesting discussion on my favorite topic, how to uh, sustain communities. And the uh, tagline today, uh, building sustainable open tech community through coding programs, contests, and hackathons. So how sustainable is it to build, uh, to uh, make communities strong? For these programs, how does it work for our uh, panelists? Uh, everything we will discuss after a short introduction of everyone here. Uh, please uh, meet Stephanie Taylor. Everyone knows, I believe, <laughs> Stephanie. <Exactly. laughs> uh, Stephanie is a program manager at Google, uh, Google working at Open Source Program Office. Uh, she works on outreach team managing the Google Code In. We have many students from this program today. Uh, for pre university students and helping the team with the uh, Google Summer of Code program. Please welcome Stephen. <laughs> Um, also, uh, the Nini Satya, uh, you already uh, saw the, the first day, very interesting uh, introduction to the uh, conference. But uh, uh, the Nini was very active at open source um, community for uh, for Asia, contributing, mentoring, uh, fostering community, uh, amazing work. And thank you for doing it. Please welcome the Nini. And uh, next, uh, Yulin Chung, uh, thank you for coming, Director of Women Who Code Singapore Network, a non-profit global organization with a set of programs for engineers to help build the careers we want. Uh, expert, programmer, and C, a highly qualified software engineer with proven skills across all avenues of software development. Please welcome Yulin. Last. Oops. Oops. We did here. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Try that one. Too many big names. It's on. It's on. Just you can use this. It's also dead, I think. It doesn't have a battery. Yeah. Oh. You can use this. Okay. <laughs> okay. And last but not least, Hong Fu Dan, uh, originally from Vietnam. She is the founder of Force Asia, the open source organization from a Asia with the goal to bring together a global community to develop open tech solution uh, for a better future. Please welcome. Oh, thank you. So let's let's start. The big question for the panel today: How sustainable is it uh, to grow community? Uh, for coding pro uh, programs, contests, and hackathons. So uh, we know, or we all know, all these uh, uh, famous programs uh, like uh, Summer, uh, Google Summer of Code, uh, Code Heat, uh, Google Code In, uh, Hacktoberfest, 24 PRs, um, and other programs. Uh, do they achieve the goal of advancing open tech uh, uh, projects? I want to start uh, the discussion with uh, everyone to introduce uh, your work, programs, and uh, uh, what are you currently uh, running, uh, what your programs involved in. Um, please, Stephanie, maybe you can okay, start. Sure. Okay, sure. Okay. Yeah, great. Um, so I lead up the Google Summer Code and Google Code In programs. Uh, Google Code In is for younger students, so it's for 13 to 17 year old pre university students. And it's essentially a contest. It's a seven-week contest, and it's all online. It's all international. And the key to it is that when students are completing tasks, they have mentors that are assigned to those tasks that are there to help guide the students. So if the student has a question, they can ask the mentor, you know, hey, I'm stuck. How do I, you know, move forward? And then what's really fun to watch is when the students actually go on to help other students, right? Which is really the whole point um, of the community. And then we have Google Summer Code, which is for university students, where they spend their summer break, uh, about three months coding on an open source project, also all online. So these are all remote projects. They're not going into a physical space and meeting with the mentor. So, that's kind of an interesting aspect of it as well. So a lot of things, obviously, like hackathons, it's in person. So it's kind of a different perspective. Um, 
And so right now, sorry, you said what we're working on. So right now, um, always working on both programs actually, but right now the students are applying for Google Summer Code this week. So applications in Tuesday night, midnight here in Singapore. So that's kind of going yeah, on. So it's our last chance. <laughs> yes, yeah, last chance, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and how many students uh, do you have? Uh, um, so for normally for GSOC, um, last year we accepted over 1,300. We'll accept a few more, uh, a little bit more than that this year. For GCI, we had record numbers and had 3,555 students that completed tasks in the 2017 program, which was a 265% increase from the previous year. Wow. So uh, to say it's growing would be an understatement, I think. Um, yes, and already we're seeing the numbers for GSOC, uh, people are registering right now, so those numbers are already higher. So the interest is definitely there, the awareness is there, um, and so much of it's word of mouth, you know, it's other people telling, hey, this was my, I was a student, it was so cool, you should be a student, or hey, I was a mentor, you should be a mentor. So it really is all about people working together and collaborating. And the mini is a great example of uh, being a student and then yeah. mentor. Yes. <laughs> Would you share your experience? Definitely. So uh, I started off my open source journey, journey in 2013 as a student, uh, so I've been continuously applying for GSOC. Uh, finally, I got selected in 2016 as a student with uh, FOSS Asia to work uh, with a project called Loklak. And uh, since then, I continued my open source journey with FOSS Asia. And for a year long, I was a student, uh, always try to contribute as much as I can. And then I got a chance to be a mentor where I kind of mentor all the new uh, comers to the project as well as contribute to the uh, code base as well. And it was an interesting journey because you have to look it in two different perspectives. So once I was a student and I look uh, up to my mentor for uh, help and a mentor looked down to a student in a different perspective saying, okay, you have to do some prerequisite to work and then come up to the mentor and, and then ask. So as a student, I didn't realize that. I used to always go ask or every single silly doubt, but my mentor was very, very, you know, uh, my mentor was Michael. He was very patient enough and then he used to be, uh, uh, he used to answer each and everything. But when I became a mentor, it's very difficult to manage your work, full-time work and then, you know, mentor students. Uh, so it, it, I learned a lot and it's very very difficult to you know be a mentor and that's what I realized and it, it was a awesome journey maybe further in next uh, I, I'll be sharing more about it thank you uh, and maybe a woman who caught uh, yeah. share some so yes we started you know who called in Singapore last year January of uh, 2017 and Remoco is a global non-profit organization uh, and our mission is to make sure that women are well represented in the tech industry, in all levels of the tech industry. And in Singapore, what we do is that we organize meetup events and uh, technical talks, uh, workshops, and we encourage the women to um, step up and basically be uh, speakers as well as um, hold a talk, uh, hold a workshop and such. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And um, yeah, so because I, I started this uh, in Singapore because I noticed there is a lack of uh, such groups. And when I was looking for a group, I can't find any of them. Okay, then uh, we need to start one in Singapore because I need a way to be able to connect with other women professionals, which is why I do this. And I think it's very, very important. It's pretty work for hackathons because sometimes it, it's a bit scary for young participants to, to apply and once you meet other people and talk and they, you see that other people did, uh, so you can do it as well, right? So yes. it's, uh, it's helping, right? Yes, definitely it is. Um, so so uh, before uh, we started our meetup group, so I've attended quite a few uh, meetup events in Singapore and there's no lack of meetup events in Singapore, there's plenty. But I went to one uh, meetup event uh, which is an open uh, open space event and out of more than 60 participants there were two other girls beside me <laughs> and um, that's, that's quite intimidating you know for any lady to basically just join a group with you know just huge um, pedestrian field event venue and so one of the ladies she was really brave she just went around and just talked with everybody but another girl 
she came over to me and said, oh, you said, okay, if I follow you for the rest of the year. Yes, of course, I say yes, but yeah, that, that's the thing, is that you, you feel intimidated. Yeah. So we, we try to provide such uh, space, such that uh, you, you get to uh, build up your confidence before you head out and try other events. And the same work uh, programs uh, continue with mentors. When you're not alone, you can follow someone through the typical <laughs> process of uh, open source project. Uh, Hong Fook, uh, you have a huge experience on uh, hackathons and different events. Uh, I do have a huge experience. <laughs> uh, I can share a little bit about what we do at Force Asia, but not huge. <laughs> so, but we are very ambitious. So our ultimate goal is to bring open source in education. So we want open source to be taught in school and university around Asia. And uh, what do we do to achieve this goal? So we are very happy to be part of GSOC and also GCI for the past, I, I think, over five years already. And uh, every year we, we get more students and we also got more mentors and we learn so much throughout the program. And at one bo a point we, we just feel that, okay, so we want more, we want G GSOC, GCI throughout the year, not only a summer program or only a seven weeks program for students. So you know that when students get on board with the program, after the program finishes, we don't see them anymore. So they are busy with school, busy with other activities. Um, so the question is, how do we keep students continuously engaged in the open source community? One of the ways that we figure out we should do is to, to organize small program. So to, to keep the student um, engaged and also continue their, their work with, with the community. And uh, we, um, so after, after GSOC, every year we run a, um, a contest, not really a contest called one like a program, it's called Code Heat. So basically, in Code Heat, um, the student or young developers from everywhere around Asia can participate in this program by check out the project, different projects on GitHub on the Force Asia, that it depends on the programming language that they are uh, interested in, so there are a lot of uh, repositories and also different issues that they can uh, start go and, 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 try, and try out um, their first step to contribute to the open source, different open source projects. And a little bit similar to, um, to coding, we also have a mentor that um, moderate and help the student if they have any question but everything happened on GitHub, on issue checker. So whenever you, uh, uh, you were, in order to participate to, to the program, you need, at first need to have a GitHub account and then you look at different projects that you like and go there and select from the beginner to, to, to difficult task. Whatever question you have, you can comment on the task and the mentor uh, will reply to you directly on the, the issue. So if you want to teach the student how to, to work like in a development company so that they are ready for, for, for the job market in the future as well. Besides CodeHeat, we also collaborate uh, with many universities in the region. So we also um, organize uh, events and workshops inside university, uh, especially in India. So we have a lot of mentors, including uh, Damini, uh, ex-student, Google some of course students now become mentor, and they often go out and organize own activity and promote open source inside the university, which is really, really cool. And uh, on, on our side, the Battle Force Asia, the team also uh, go to um, other, other conferences, talk about our work and introduce to student and young developer about um, open source. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, you can hack at home, right? Uh, we organize site and hack event in hackathons the in cooperation with the uh, NGO like the UNESCO or the GIZ. The organization they also want to explore the potential of open source, how it can help the development organization and we also work with them on a number of uh, hackathons throughout the year. Uh, you touched on a very important question, uh, how do we keep students stay uh, in open source in general or maybe on the same project? And uh, because it's uh, it's an incentive program, and uh, for some the the, peop the students can uh, attend for many different reasons. Uh, so uh, I wonder, maybe you have some uh, statistic, uh, Stephanie, or ideas? Uh, how many uh, students stay? How many uh, can students come back? Uh, and uh, what are the reasons why uh, they participate? So it varies. So we'll start with Google Code, and so that's again the, one, the program for the younger students. 
Um, we have a lot of students that if they become a winner, they can only be a winner once. So um, they still want to, they're, they're excited. They've been, you know, they might have completed 50 tasks or whatever in the previous contest. Um, yeah, that does happen. And um, I think we had one do 80 some of this year. But anyway, most of the students do about 20 to 40, I think, most of the people who end up being winners. But they want to stay involved. They're like, this is so cool, this is fun. I really enjoy working with these people. And then they think, well, it was a really cool experience for me. My mentors were amazing. I want to be a mentor. So we've seen so many of these students become mentors. Over the last three or four years, we, I think three years ago, we opened it up, went through all the legal rigmarole, and um, now we can have mentors that are under 18. So the students, if they're 13 to 17, they can be a mentor in GCI. Um, they still get invited by the organization, but obviously the organization has worked with them in the past, and they're like cross Asian, and they go, oh, you're great, sure, it'd be great for you to work with other students. And that's really cool because, again, they were a student the previous year, and so they have that perspective to be able to say, I know what it feels like to come in new to this. And most of the time, I mean, there's really, we don't have a great statistic on it. Um, I am starting to get more and more statistics on this, but one of the things that we ask about is, you know, is this your first experience with open source? And <clears throat> We're just, we just started asking that exact specific question um, this year, so we will start accumulating those stats and be able to, to see more about it. But my feeling is that for GCI in particular, probably I'd say at least 80% either didn't know what open source was at all, or certainly had never contributed to it. Probably even 90%, honestly, had never contributed to it. Um, and so GCI gives them that opportunity and a lot of them always tell us, well, I didn't have any idea how to start. Like, why would somebody care about, you know, I'm 14 years old, why would some, you know, open source project and these people around the world, why would they care about my idea and about how I think this could be better or this feature or, or my pull request? And so the cool thing about GSOC and GCI is all of the organizations want these students. They're there to help these students. They're there, there to guide them. And so, they, you know, which may not necessarily be the case for all open source organizations because it does take a lot of patience and a lot of, um, uh, a lot of answering questions, uh, particularly for GCI students, um, which is great, but you have to have the right people. You have to have the right mentors, and that goes with any, any kind of a program. Not everybody should be a mentor. Um, some people are better at doing administrative stuff, and they, but they're not as good at dealing with the individual day-to-day -day part of working with students. Maybe they're good at reviewing the work, but actually answering questions, not everybody is, is that, that's their thing. And that's fine, right? There, again, there's so many different ways to contribute to open source as well as being um, mentors or org admins. And um, sorry, I think I just went around the question. Um, the other part is uh, GSOC. So GSOC, we are seeing, I, I feel like we're seeing more and more students become mentors, meaning, and when they do that, they're even more likely to continue to stay involved in open source. We have a lot of students who may you know, go off and do something else and then come back a couple of years later because maybe their last two years of university are just crazy busy and they just don't have time. But they remember the experience they had and they really enjoyed working with whichever community and they go back and you know, start doing some more pull requests. I'm like, hey, I'm back, I've got some time. you know. Or I was talking to a gentleman the other day at our GSOC meetup and he, he was, it was really cool because he said, you know, I was a student, or I applied to be a student in 2010. I didn't get accepted. This is as a GSOC student. I didn't get accepted. I applied the next year, and I got accepted. He said, but after that first year, he's like, I really submitted a really bad proposal. And they pretty much told me that, right? Um, but they could tell that I was interested and I was excited about the project. So they stayed, you know, talking to me and encouraging me. And so he kept learning and kept pushing himself. And then was accepted the next year as a student, and then has been a mentor since. So since a mentor since 2012, and then now he's on the board of that particular organization. So yeah, so in, in that's actually honestly not a rare occurrence. But I hear things like that these days. So it's fun because we hear about from all all parts of the world, you know. Um, but how getting involved in GSOC and finding people like being a part of a community, I think, is so important for. Uh, making people want to stay involved in open source. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, just to add on, if you, sorry, if you something. No, 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 I can't <laughs> um, Yeah, just to add on, uh, 
Ours, the, the way uh, we will cooperate is obviously slightly different from us. We don't have uh, many students <laughs> join our events, but uh, we do have a social cooling event. And we did that once a week last year, and this year it was once a month, where we just get together and uh, work on the source projects. And I always encourage um, the members who turn up to basically uh, focus on what are their interests rather than their language, uh, which is very different. And also, uh, we don't actually have a very strict mentor mentee uh, buying because uh, we are, because we are all professionals anyway. So we just pretty much learn from each other, which is slightly different. And of course, we have a Slack group where people just post questions, and whoever who knows the answer basically can answer, which is slightly different. And the number of people who recurrently, you know, uh, come back are uh, of course very few <laughs> in ratio. But definitely they are, and these are the ones that really keep the projects going that, because they are passionate about the topic and they keep learning. All these, you know, by the time they start, they most of them don't actually know the language or anything, but they are interested in projects. But as they go along, they learn more about the language they are interested to learn more. And that keeps them going. Yeah. So I totally agree with Julie and also with Stephanie. So how do you keep people? First of all, you need to allow them to work on something that they love. And the second thing is keep them responsibility. The sense of responsibility is really important to keep people engaged. Um, another thing is recognition. So give them um, recognition, appreciation for their work. And something else that I learned by working with the post Asia community and also our developer, build a personal relationship. So normally, we try to um, have a personal connection with our core developers. So we try to find out what, what are their interests, where they come from, their family, their, their, their setting, to understand more uh, the level of engagement. So one, uh, why this month they really have a lot of uh, food requests from Jewishan, because the other ones are a little bit less. So we want to understand the environment and setting around them and to, to tackle this. So it's really important first to um, let them do what they like, transfer responsibility and ownership, uh, recognition, appreciation, and build a personal relationship with your core contributors and developers because if you have a good relationship with the core people, the core people will help you to get more new people on board. This is so true. <laughs> Uh, you did, uh, I guess, uh, uh, user sorry. research. Stephanie, you have something? Sorry, one more thing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, sorry, because you both brought a, a very valid point about finding uh, projects someone's passionate about. We get that asked. We get asked that all the time. Okay, there's 212 organizations participating in GSOC this year. How do I choose? And we say, we can't choose that for you. You need to find something that you want to do because there's nothing more awful than working on a project that you care nothing about for three months. Right, find something that you care about, and then, or something that you might that at least is interesting. That you're like, oh, this sounds kind of cool. I don't really know much about this, but it sounds like it might be cool. And then maybe you do the project, and you're like, well, okay, maybe it's not so cool. Um, but hopefully, you do the project and go, oh, this really is fun. And then you keep going down that path. So I think it's the pa the passion for a particular project or type of project really is is key, as well as obviously the community. This is a very good comment, and I was wondering, uh, maybe you could share your experience. How did you find something you like, and uh, how who helped you on that way? Yeah. So um, I will just try to dis uh, discriminate how a student thinks and how a working professional thinks. So as a student, I had awareness of how to build my own project on my local system, but I am not aware how to make some real time project which actually works everywhere where users can use anywhere on any device, I was not aware of that. So I got uh, a chance to work on a project called Loklak. So uh, there I have came, come to know that, okay, uh, this is how you have to fix the bugs, make sure they are responsive or also get to know that there is something called CI, CD. I, I was not aware of that when I was doing my own personal project. Okay, there is something which my, uh, my code have to uh, go through some test cases, have to pass, and this code have to get successfully deployed. So I have to make sure that what I write is, I, I have to be more responsible when I work with the community. So all that, uh, my perspective towards you know building up things have changed totally. And that kind of helped me to grow, and uh, once I started working, I got used to that environment. Okay, uh, first I have to do my homework. So. Uh, 
though you work as a full time you will be uh, assigned a mentor at, at a company where mentor is not responsible for you know giving the entire he's not going to he or she is not going to write code for you obviously they will be just guiding you so you have to you know be ready to learn on your own and give uh, learn how to unblock yourself and get uh, ask the right set of questions so that you get unblocked by own by your uh, by your own so i have learned that and um, and also i would like to talk about uh, two other coding programs october fest and 24 prs how many of you are aware of those of these two <laughs> very very few so uh, so far we are we are talking about programs for students but there are uh, these two unique programs for people there's no age rest rest restriction and also your global uh, location this is open for everyone so the aim of these programs are uh, to actually encourage individuals to start get started uh, get contribute uh, to open source uh, so i would like to share a small example my mom is a teacher and uh, she quit her job 2 years back to pursue her phd and she wanted to build her own website and she kind of asked me to write code for her own website and she she started using wordpress for that but i i kind of you know uh, gave her some awareness and uh, told her that okay hey this is there is this hacktober fest going on in october you can maybe try contributing to that and also 24 prs is a coding program which happens in december and it's open for everyone as well same like hacktober fest where you have to uh, send out 24 pull request uh in in the month of december so what i have seen is all these communities though they are multiple coding programs it's the responsibility of the community to be welcoming be uh, to to the uh, newcomers be it anything so there will be people who are uh, coming from non coding background and there will be students who are curious enough you know always come up with more and more questions but uh, very little knowledge on the actual code base so you have to be patient enough and the community should be welcoming and also take care of all these programs happening uh, in a right way so uh, these are like two different perspective how a community should encourage and uh, a, a program to go it uh, to take it forward and a student uh, how he should be response obviously if a mentor is so helpful to a student the student will be you know giving back to the community so that kind of perspective should be carried on Thank you very much. And um, maybe we have some questions from the audience. Thank you, Dan. Oh, we have. Oh, okay. I will. I will give you. <laughs> but we feel bad for turning out many of those proposals and uh, because students were pretty interested to do a lot of uh, work in open source so is there a way that uh, gsoc or uh, can we can we pursue them like can we ask them like okay after gsoc you can come back and definitely work with us like yeah actually a lot of organizations do that and a lot of students do that they don't have to be a part of gsoc to contribute i mean that ever right um because anybody can contribute to open source so a lot of times people will have uh again maybe they get five student slots and they have like 10 excellent students and they tell the other five students that they can't accept they say we would love to for you to be stay involved in our program and um you know keep contributing and of course sometimes people will keep contributing and then they apply again the next year if they're eligible sometimes maybe those students aren't going to be eligible because this is their last year at university um some organizations have actually started their own kind of like a mini gsoc or have found ways to fund the fund them somewhat it may not be the same amount that the students are getting for gsoc but still to give them something so that they can focus on the coding for the summer that's becoming more and more common and you know because we do give the organizations some stipends they some organizations use a little bit of that money um towards that So, if if I follow up on this, like, uh, can we use this data, like, whatever 
students uh, send their proposal and they suppose it's not fitting in a in that type frame. Uh, we got only three slots, but there are five, six proposals which are really good. So can we uh, ask this other uh, two, three students and uh, drop a mail later? Does Google allow us to do that? Like, sorry, asking. I'm sorry. The last part. Asking them. Asking them. Asking what? them to apply again or something like. Uh, that. Apply again like next year. Uh, or what do you mean? Not for GSoft. We can drop in and then ask them uh, to. Uh, again, contribute and like engage by from our Oh yeah, I mean you can always. I mean you're already hopefully you're already talking to them. Hopefully they're already communicating with them with you. And then once the students are announced, you, you can just I would say immediately as soon as soon as students are announced, immediately contact those three or four that you couldn't accept and say we really want to just like you. We just didn't get enough slots this year. We really want you to be involved in the community. We hope you'll stay. You know. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to come to oh, another question. The other side of the uh, hi, I I am an IDE college student. So right now, what's the view of the uh, resource? What? Oh, open source. And I won't know the meaning of the digital. What's it all about? I'm sorry. What's the what was the question exactly? I didn't what's understand. The meaning of the open source? What's meaning of open what source? I can't, okay. I can't say it. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's a really good question. Now, uh, yes, it's actually what we want to do to tell people what is open source. Okay. Um, very simple example. Do you know uh, Wikipedia? Oh. Do you use Wikipedia? Yes. Okay. So this is an example of open source. So something that people can freely contribute, can freely edit, and can, can freely copy and share to everyone. So the Wikipedia is using many people around the world, but do you know that Wikipedia is run by a software called Wikimedia? So the software itself is also an open source uh, software. So in open source project, open source software, actually you have the freedom to copy, to edit, and to share with everyone that you like, so, and you're open. So not only about like free to use uh, for, for the, um, uh, it's quite easy. So do you use Microsoft? Um, what do operating system do you use? Um, Microsoft? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. You're not sure? No problem. Uh, no problem, so uh, open source, uh, that's how the people make the software. But for the community, in open source uh, project, the people don't get hired to work on the thing, uh, on the project. So, so they uh, they contribute to it based on their passion and their interest. So everyone is welcome. So you don't need to be hired to work for a software company, for instance, today. Uh, that many mentioned about the Locklock project. If you're curious to learn about the project, you can just go online and see what can you have. And in order to build a, a software project, it's not only about writing code. There's so many things that a normal contributor can, uh, can have. For instance, documentation, localization, uh, UX, so how to make the application look good, right? So there are many things that you can do. And in the open source, a project or community, they open for everyone. Yeah? So to contribute. And about what is GSOC? Stephanie, probably you missed the earlier uh, session. She also uh, asked what is okay. the meaning of GSOC. The meaning of GSOC, okay. Yeah. You want, me to, want me to take that one? Okay, the quick version of that is GSOC is Google's Summer of Code, and it's a program for university students. They spend three months coding on an open source project under the guidance of a mentor, and they are the stipend. So that's the short version. <laughs> okay. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, what asked you? Uh, hi, I'm Hong Sun. I'm also from the IT College West. Uh, I also want to ask, like, what what will happen to, like, if you dealing with those those uh, programmers which like just want to try out programming, like those who are not really that, who like have little to no experience. Um, you want to okay, we get lots of that and. <laughs> Welcome, seriously, I would say seriously welcome. It's really more about your interest in the project itself rather than your level of uh, uh, code, so to speak. Yeah. If you're interested in a project, just contribute. That's how you learn any language, actually. We don't uh, actually learn language by having a teacher or a mentor tell us uh, what to learn next about the language. No, we learn about the language by knowing and learning how to code a particular thing. And if you're interested in the project, you want that project to succeed, 
do better, to work better, you learn more of the about the language and that's how you learn how to learn any programming language. So you have asked like, I, I, I can't, don't uh, write code that often, but how can I just contribute to a bigger project, right? So for you to get started, uh, maybe you can just uh, join one of the one of their uh, communication chat or IRC chat channel and introduce yourself and you know kind of say that okay I'm a new new uh, joiner and I'm really new to this code base can I get some help ask out for help and I'm sure you will be getting some uh, people you know helping you out and then you can create a pull request or you know send out a small patch to the code base saying okay this is what I have written and there will be a review process by the mentors or the maintainers and they will be you know they will try to correct your code review it properly so that you you know in the process you keep on learning more and more on it and you make your pull request more beautiful and then it finally gets merged to the code base and that's the biggest achievement <laughs> so for sure your first pull request will take a lot of time but i'm sure that you will learn a lot of a lot about the code base from it for, um, for people who haven't heard about open source before, we have a very detailed documentation on the Force Asia blog. It, it's called, uh, uh, con okay, so how do I first con contribute to open source project? And there is an article written by our developers for non coder and also uh, for technical people. Um, I just want to, to share a little bit of how I learned, I did not study programming, but, but, but how I learned Python. So I come, I also do the like code academy where it, where it show you different uh, way how to learn code, but actually it only helped when I figure out that I have a, a problem that I want to solve that problem. So I think seven years ago, I want to generate a PDF file from a lot of images. So if I have a clear problem in mind, it's easier to learn programming then uh, just to go into to a, a, a language that you want to learn. So think of a, a, a problem that you want to solve us and then try to, to, to Google that to read online what are the um, potential solutions that you, that you can do to solve that problem. Or if you have project already in mind, there are so many people to ask and maybe find partners to live together. So it's the best place to do. So don't be shy, talk to people and ask questions about like what is open source and how I can be part of it. Great question. So I think we have two minutes uh, left. And um, uh, last question, what else do we need to keep healthy and growing communities? What is your takeaway uh, on this simple question, which is not easy to answer? <laughs> yeah. So anyone want? Yeah, definitely. I would say just persevere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, just, yeah, the thing is that People do uh, go away, but they come back also. So as long as the project is still open, you'll have people who come in and out, and that's fine. Come to the process. Yeah, 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 okay. It's happens <laughs> every year. And then you can meet the right people, can meet your friends, can meet the new contributors, and can start new projects. So come to, to us. It happens every year here in Singapore in March. And we also have a very active Gitto channel. If you have any questions, go to Gitto for Asia, the community we have you. So I mean, I think you just—it's always about bringing new people in, right? I mean, that's that's what's going to keep a project healthy. Um, and there are various ways of doing that. You know, um, I mentioned in my talk earlier, um, Google Smart Code has been a good way for some of these small and medium-sized projects to get more visibility because a lot of projects are very localized. So maybe everybody um, that's a contributor is in Sao Paulo or Toronto or Berlin, um, but they don't know how to get word out about their project across the world. So things like Google Summer Code and other, other programs where there's a lot of different open source projects available for people to, you know, like people can go to our website and say, oh, there's 212 projects, and they can read up on all of those. They can also look at last year's projects because um, we have different projects each year. Some projects, like Foss Asia, have been contributing for five or six years, um, or some for 12 or 14, but others, you know, we will be in GSOC for one year, but then the next year it's a different, you know, we, we accept somebody else. But we're always accepting new organizations. Like this year we accepted 30, or actually 41 new projects into GSOC. So that's giving those new projects more visibility, so more people now know what they do. 
Um, again, some of these are very small projects, and maybe five or six core contributors. So I see myself uh, in you guys uh, six years back. So maybe I can help you out to create your first pull request or your first commit today itself. See, that's how we got connected. And that's how the community works. Uh, and I also wanted to add m from my personal experience that uh, I see that uh, programs like Google Summer of Code inspired many different programs as well, where you don't need to contribute code, you can start as a non-code contributor, and it's an easy way uh, to become a member of a community, and it can be any expertise you have, the design, translation, documentation, uh, and maybe it's even the second step. The first step is to become a user and to get to know people who build this software and ask them what to, what, how can I help. So this was my takeaway from uh, uh, what I saw uh, uh, following up uh, the Google Summer of Code and other programs. Uh, do we have uh, more time for questions or uh, what? <laughs> it's 11.42. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, I want to finish uh, discussion and say thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, but if we have questions from the audience, uh, I think we can uh, continue with the follow up with the discussion. Oh. Uh. Thank you. Uh, I just comment actually. Uh, thank you for the panel. I think it's uh, also an honor to be able to host this post Asia in this institute. My name is Tak Swan, I am uh, kind of look after this building. But uh, I also look after the Lifelong Learning Council's uh, Learn Sit Fund, which is really a, a funding scheme that encourages uh, individuals who wants to facilitate some form of learning opportunity. I thought maybe it's useful as a resource for mentors who think that uh, they can form their own community, maybe collaborating with Google or whoever. I wants to support and sustain the uh, learning journey uh, by applying uh, this uh, funding to support because part of the government uh, intention is to promote lifelong learning. So I think this is a very great uh, initiative that all you are in and I think we actually have the young uh, uh, students uh, to learn something, to learn the skill and uh, this is really important. So if anyone wants to find out more, can, can talk to me. Thank you. Learning Institute is such a great name. <laughs> this is definitely follow us. We need to learn all life. Uh, any more comments or questions? Don't be shy. Okay, good. Then I think we can continue off stage. Uh, I know the video recording. If you have uh, some personal questions to our panel members, it's your chance to ask. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you guys.